Praise you, Father. Praise you, God. Come on, give him a hand. Give him a hand that he's going to be good. You want to praise him ahead of time right now. Praise him before the word even comes. Praise him that you have what you need before you even ask. Praise him that he already knows what you need. Praise him that he knows what you want, that he knows what you desire, that he knows how to get it to you even though you don't know how to get it to yourself. Praise him that he's working even behind the scenes. Praise him that he's good in spite of what's happening to you right now. Come on. Praise him that he's still good in spite of what's happening to you right now. He's worthy of it. No matter what's happening to you, he's worthy of it. And he's going to change your situation if you trust him. Go ahead and be seated today. Thank you so much. If y'all are wondering what I'm drinking, because it's quite colorful, just want you to know it's just vitamin water. So is this the 11 a.m. service? Now what I hear about the 11 a.m. service is that y'all are twice as loud as the 9 a.m. service. Am I right? Mm. We'll have to put that to the test. All right. Joshua chapter 1. Is it okay if I just get into the word? I mean, I don't know why else you came. You probably just want to, like, hear from God. If you didn't come to hear from God, why are you in church? All right. Joshua chapter 1, 1 through 3. In verse 6, because you know the Bible is our safe place. The Bible is where stuff happens. The Bible, 1 John 5, 8, the water, which is the word of God, the blood, and the Holy Spirit are all in agreement. If we want to talk about the Holy Ghost and what he can do, this is Holy Ghost month, we need to first say the word because wherever the word of God is purely spoken, the Holy Spirit is attracted to that place. That's why we say the word, because we want the Holy Ghost to confirm what we're saying. It's not just about talking. It's about demonstrating what we're saying. But you have to say it first, and then the Holy Ghost demonstrates. Make sense? God said, let there be light. The Holy Spirit manifested light. But he needed God to say it first, and then he manifests it. You have been quiet, some of you, for too long. God has given you a promise. He's told you, but you never say it. You know it's right there on the page, but you don't claim it for yourself and you don't say it. When you're looking at your child and they're going through what they're going through, <clears throat> you get worried. You don't say the promise. When you see rebellion, when you see things going on, you look at the situation, you get anxious, you don't say the promise. The Holy Spirit is waiting for you to say it and believe it. And then he'll confirm it. He wants you to believe it, then he wants you to say it, then he wants you to confirm it. Joshua 1, 1 through 3, I have a prophetic message for you today. I don't always have prophetic messages. Prophetic messages are different kind of messages. But this is a prophetic message. I had this over six months ago before my wife and I even knew that we would be coming to be a part of the way. I got this message because you were on God's mind. Think about that. I didn't even know I was going to be here at this time. And we got the message, the Lord, I remember I was sitting out on my deck and the Lord starts talking about the way. I said, okay, you want to talk about the way? Cool. And he gives me this message for you that I'm about to deliver to you today. But the Bible is very clear when it says that even though Jesus had said many things, and even though the apostles later on were preaching, it said the word of God did the people no benefit because it wasn't mixed with faith. So prophetic words could be spoken, and sometimes they're just nonsense. But sometimes there are words that are truly from the Lord in season. And when that happens, you have to have your part of mixing it with faith. So as it comes to your ears, it has to go just past your ears and wave past you. It's got to go through your ears, to your heart, to the center of who you are and say, that is for me. I will have that. And you have to grab onto it. The Bible says that Paul told Timothy at a certain time, he said, you have to fight with the prophetic words you were given. So we don't just get prophetic words when you stand up and somebody in church gives you a prophetic word. No, he's like, you've got many words by yourself when nobody else was there is when God deposited to you a prophetic word. Some of y'all were driving in your car and God gave you the word about your family. 
Some of y'all were at the Walmart and you got out of your car and right when you stepped out, God told you about your child and how he's going to take care of them. Wherever it was, there was a moment you got in, you got a word from God that came from heaven. It came to you. It was imparted to you. And in that moment, if you had faith or not, was whether the word began to plant and produce. If in the moment God gave you the word, doubt was the first thing that happened. You crippled the producing power of the seed. But the moment that God gives you it, if you say, oh, yes, Lord, hey, I don't know how that's going to work. I don't even need to know how it's going to figure out. But the fact that you just said it, I believe it. I believe it. I received this. I'm standing on this now. You're mixing it with faith. You're giving it soil for the seed to go down into. <clears throat> Mary was pregnant supernaturally by the Holy Ghost. The seed was of God. He has Jesus inside of her. And she goes and she's walking to go see Elizabeth. Elizabeth is pregnant with John the Baptist. And it says that when John the Baptist and Elizabeth, when John the Baptist inside of Elizabeth and Jesus inside of Mary came within a certain proximity, that John the Baptist leapt inside of Elizabeth. He leapt inside of her and immediately was filled with the Holy Ghost. Inside of the womb, filled with the Holy Ghost. The reason why that happened, there's two reasons. And man, I could talk about this the entire service, how beautiful this is, but I'll say these two reasons. Number one, there is no other baptizer of the Holy Spirit but Jesus himself. So John the Baptist had to wait till he was in a certain proximity because even when Jesus was not fully formed, he is the only baptizer of the Holy Ghost. He is the only one who truly fills all in all. And Jesus was already, can you imagine in the womb? Jesus was already doing things before he even came out of the womb. John the Baptist gets filled with the Holy Ghost. The second reason was because Jesus' destiny was also tied to John the Baptist's destiny. John the Baptist was the one who prepared the way for Jesus. Remember that? I'm here to prepare the way for somebody. I'm not even going to be worthy to tie his sandals. He's greater than I am. He's coming behind me. Wait till you see him. I'm nothing compared to him. I'm going to be less because of who he is. So what happened was the destiny of John the Baptist, John the Baptist gets in proximity with Jesus, which is part of his future. When you get in proximity with Jesus, who is the word, when you get in proximity with a word from God that is supposed to be part of your future, something inside of you jumps. There's something different about hearing many words, but there will be a line that I say today where you'll hear a voice behind my voice. And that voice will touch you in a place that you're in right now in your life. Every one of you are in a different place, but when that word touches you, something inside of you is going to go, oh, that's for me. Your baby is jumping because you are destined to get in complete collision with that word and that promise from God. Your destiny is meant to collide with that promise. That promise is different than anything else I said. It is a prophetic promise specifically for you. The Holy Spirit knows how to talk to you, even if people don't. So he speaks to you, it jumps inside of your spirit, and what are you supposed to do? Have faith in that moment, and what's one of the ways we show faith? We shout for joy. Joshua was told to go around the building seven times, and then at the end of it, he said, I want you to just start shouting. For most of us, we're like, Lord, what the heck are you talking about? You want me to walk around this building and then just start screaming a lot? But he didn't stop there. He said, I want you to shout for I have given you the city. So he's not shouting from an empty place like we do in church. We're just trying to make noise. But Joshua is shouting from a promise that God already gave him. It's the promise that shouts, not your voice. You're giving voice to a promise that cannot be withheld inside of you. The promise is so alive. The promise knows that the promise is going to come to pass. The promise is willing itself into existence. And it's simply using your vocal cords to shout out the excitement that the promise is going to come to pass. That's a different kind of shout. It's a promise that shouts. So what I'm about to give you is a prophetic word. And if you have the faith to receive it, it will literally go to work before you leave this service. 
Joshua 1, 1 through 3. Are you ready? After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, and he said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land that I am giving you. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you put your foot, I'm going to give it to you. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess. Somebody say the word possess. All the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. I want to talk to you about the word possess just real quick. You see, possessing something is different than being promised something. You can be promised a lot, but it doesn't mean you'll possess any of it. The Bible says that God promised all of Israel all of the land. He said it's yours. Wherever you set your foot, I've given it to you. This is my promise to you. Yet he left it to Joshua and the armies to go and possess what was already theirs. The Bible says when Joshua died, he was looking up and Joshua was trying to find another leader because God said even when the time that Joshua died, even though Joshua had conquered many armies, he said there is still much land to possess. Who's going to stand up and go and take what is already ours? You see, your family's salvation is already yours. But you actually cannot get it until you decide to clear out all the enemies that are sitting on your land. Did you hear what I just said? Freedom from that breakthrough is actually already yours. Jesus gave it to you. But he's not just going to hand it to you on a silver platter. He did his part. He did his part to the fact that he literally said, my part, it is finished. I've done everything I need to do. Now, I'm telling you, that land is yours. That breakthrough is yours. Your family is yours. These things are yours. However, you're going to have to get out your sword. You're going to have to clean some stuff off. Turn off the television clicker. You're going to have to get up a little bit. You're going to have to go into the land because there are people, enemies, that are sitting on the land that you have, and they're acting like it's theirs. Are you okay with that? Or do you want to go and take and possess what I've already given to you? You see, Christianity can be one of two lives. You could have a life where you go to church, where you tithe, where you have a blessed family, and you go to heaven. And maybe that is the epitome of what you thought this was all about. Or there's another life, a radical life. A life where you're not just saved and you're preparing for the day to come, but you're literally bringing heaven to earth on a daily basis, not waiting for you to get to heaven. You're bringing that down here. When that happens, you become a threat to the enemy. That means that you begin to stir up things that are not wanting to be stirred up. You're stirring up sleeping giants that are staying on your territory and you're saying, I'm not going to go my entire life and you're just going to be squatting on my land. Matter of fact, I'm going to find where you're at. I'm going to take you out of my family. I'm going to take this over. I'm actually going to live a life more abundantly. I'm tired of just being a Christian, sitting in church, yet still feeling like I'm lost. When are you going to get tired of being a Christian, just coming to church, but still being depressed, still having all the feelings of lost people, still having the confusion that lost people have? When will you stand up, rise up and say, there have been things given to me. I don't have them yet, but I'm not going to just stay not having them yet. I'm ready to walk into what I get. I'm going to pass. Possess. Say it. Possess. Say it again. Possess. All right. So he says, it's your time now, Joshua. You saw Moses doing some stuff, but now it's your time. You've been preparing for this. You've been praying on this. You've been asking for a long time. Well, guess what, Joshua? You woke up this morning. It's your time. 
Now, you have to understand something very simply about time, real quick, about how God sees time, because it will build your faith to understand why when God says something, it's not like anybody else who says something. It's different when God speaks than when just somebody speaks. Let me tell you why. Here's time. They're going to put that up on the board over there. You could zoom into it real quick on that screen. <clears throat> Here's time. Time is at one point and then comes all the way to this point. We have the beginning of time. Zoom in on it real quick. Thank you. At the beginning of time, there's God before time begins. Do you understand? Before the beginning, there's God. We're on the same page. So God is outside of what time is. After the end of all of time, there's God. So time is something that is movable for God. He can take time and he can toss it over here. He can take time and he can toss it back here. He can take time and he can roll it down there. He could look at time. He could look into time. He could go into time and then pop out of time. He can run around time. Time is not something he's bound by. You and I are. He doesn't go Monday to Monday. You and I do. However, by the fact that he's outside of time also means that he's in time all at the same time. Let me show you what I mean. So there's creation. We're going to Noah here. We're going forward in time. Abraham, there's the prophets. We're going to go way forward in time. There's Jesus. There's the cross, the resurrection. Here's the book of Acts when we start the new church. There's your birth. Whatever year that was, you're born. There's your death. It's going to happen sometime in time. You don't know what day that is, but it's going to happen. If we go right now, we're in the year 2022. What if we get to 2500s? Who knows? 3500, 4500. But there will be a day that Jesus comes back. Okay? Now, let's take two attributes of Jesus, very important attributes. Just two of them. If we took all the attributes, this would be incredible. Your mind would be blown. But let me just give you two real quick about how incredible God is when he talks about time. He's omniscient. Omniscient means he's all-knowing. This means he cannot learn anything. Just think about that. It is impossible for God to learn anything. Which means that he can never arrive somewhere. God doesn't arrive anywhere because he's omnipresent. Omnipresent doesn't just mean he's here everywhere. It means he's in all of time in the present. Which means that he can't arrive anywhere because it would mean that he wasn't already there. He has no past because it was mean that there's something behind him. But there's nothing behind God because he's everywhere. He has no future because it would mean that he's learning something new as he's coming to a new day he hasn't seen yet. But God can't learn anything new. He says, I will do exceedingly above and beyond all you ask, think, or imagine. Numbers 23, 19 says that it is impossible for God to lie. Can you say that? It's impossible for God to lie. Say it again. It's impossible for God to lie. It's not that God doesn't try to lie. It is impossible for God to lie. He literally cannot lie. The enemy, it's impossible for him to say the truth. All he can do is lie. God, it's impossible for him to lie. All he can do is say the truth, which means that any promise God gives, it has to be a proven promise. It can't be a theorized promise. So if he says, I can do all you ask, think, or imagine, abundantly above all you ask, think, it's because he had to go through the entirety of time. He had to go through all of time and see what every single person until the end of time would ask without his help. Then he had to see what every person till the end of time would imagine without his help. Then he had to see what every single person at the end of time would think and the ideas they would have without his help. He got to the end of time, saw every single person and everything they would do, and he said, I can exceed all of it if they will involve me. 
So now he speaks backwards to a man named Paul who pins these words and says, and God will do exceedingly above and beyond all you ask, think, or imagine. It wasn't something he got in the moment. God had already been to the end of time and shouted backwards for Paul to write something down on the pages saying, I'm already here. I've seen everything they asked, thought, and imagined, and tell them I can exceed it all because if they'll just involve me. So even though we're in the year 2022, remember, there's no past for God and there's no future for God. That means that as creation right now, even though we're in October 16th, 2022, God right now is forming out of the ground a man. And he's blowing into that man's nostrils the breath of life right now. Also right now, Abraham is lifting up the knife about to kill his son, Isaac. But the angel is coming right now for God. It's in the present for God. He's coming and saying, stop, because you fear the Lord, you don't have to do this. There's a ram in the thicket. Also right now, Jesus is being born, and they're trying to find him right now in Bethlehem, in the present for God. It's our past, but it's his present. Also right now, Jesus is dying on the cross. He's rising from the dead. Right now, conquering everything in hell, coming back with the keys so that you and I could have authority. But it's in the present for God. Right now, Jesus is seeing when you were born. That's your past. Right now, God is already at your funeral. He knows the suit that people are wearing when they're giving the speeches for you. He's already watching the speeches of your children or people who are saying good and nice things about you, hopefully. He sees if you're cremated or if you're in a casket. He's already in the future in 2500. He knows what's going on there. He knows what the economy's like, the technology. He already knows 3500. And the Bible says that God the Father is the only one who knows the time and the moment that Jesus will return. How could he know the time and the moment that he returns? Because he's already there. So when God speaks to you, you have to understand it's not like any other man speaking to you because he's speaking to you from the place of the breakthrough you're hoping for. He's speaking to you as you're hoping for a promise or a breakthrough. He's standing in the promise realized. He's standing in the breakthrough realized. And he's speaking backwards to you to the point where you are. And he's trying to give you the next step so that he can lead you to where he already is. In the manifestation of the promise. This isn't too deep, right? Are you guys understanding what I'm saying? So God is literally speaking backwards to you. That's why you can trust whatever he says. You don't need to question it. You don't know things that God knows. His ways are what? Higher than ours. His thoughts are what? Higher than our thoughts. That's why God asks us to walk by faith and not by... Because if we could see what he sees, he's doing things we have no idea about. He's above us working things out right now on your behalf. There are things and temptations you're about to run through on this Wednesday, three days from now, that the Lord, the Bible says, this is so incredible. This is um, uh, John 10. It says that literally God goes before you and it said that his grace is so powerful that there is no temptation that has come to man that God does not know about, that he's already made a way of escape. What does that mean? That means that God already went into your Wednesday, your Friday of this week. You haven't arrived yet. But he sees when you're going to be tempted. He already sees all the moments that you're going to be tempted. Here, here, and here. And God went ahead because of his love for you, attached an exit door to every single one of those temptations. So he put an exit door here, there, there. He went ahead and he put the exit plan before you even get to it because of his love for you. You don't think there's a way out of your temptation? Really? No. Before you even got to the place of being tempted, God saw what was going to happen and he made an exit strategy for you. If you will just look at him in the midst of it, if you'll just turn your eyes, he'll give you the steps out of the worst temptations you've ever known. So, knowing that about God, here's the prophetic word. Are you ready for it? Your faith 
is from this point on, I'm just here to deliver something. This is what God told me to tell you. You have seen other people's families saved, but this is truly the season your family will completely be saved. You have seen other people have breakthrough, but you've been waiting long enough. This is the time for the Wayroad Outreach to experience breakthrough on a level they never have ever seen before. You have gone in circles for long enough, but for the Wayroad Outreach, the circles stop now, the falling stops now, and you will now know your destiny, purpose, and you will be assigned and commissioned in the name of Jesus. He told me it's your time. Six months ago, he told me it's their time. He told me, Gavin, when you go, you got to tell them it's their time. It's the way's time. He wishes he could say this to every church, but he can't say this to every church. But he's saying it to the way. It's your time. Do you know what God is saying? Remember, he only speaks it because he already sees it. God, Jesus. Do you know that God is watching your family members, lifting their hands, praising him, and they're not even saved yet? Do you know he's already there? The Bible says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1, 2, and the earth was formless and void, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. The word let means allow it to happen again. What? Yeah, allow it to happen again. What is he saying? The will of God is a causative will. The will of God in its nature is causative, meaning the moment God wills something, the moment he wants something, it exists. Just by the fact God wanting something makes it exist. God wills it, it exists, but when he speaks it, it becomes. He wills it, it exists. When he speaks it, it becomes. God's will was already that there would be light. So light existed now in a spiritual realm, but it had not become yet. The moment he willed for light, it was already there. That's why it said, allow it to happen again, because it already was in the spiritual realm. And then when he spoke it, it came into the physical realm. What am I saying? God never says anything to you that does not already exist. <laughs> Isaiah 9 6 Isaiah's prophesying and he's in the spirit because when you prophesy the word prophesy means to bubble up from the inside it's something that doesn't come from your mind it's a bubbling up of the inside and he's under the authority of the Holy Ghost as he's prophesying and it says he says these words unto us a child is born unto us a son is given now this is seven centuries before the child who is Jesus would be born but Isaiah is saying it like it's in the present. Unto us a child is born. It wouldn't be for seven centuries that we would see him. But see what happened was Isaiah got into a moment of the spirit. And when you're in the spirit, you don't see things like man sees them. He rose above the clouds of what man saw and he began to take a small look through the eyes of the spirit. And the spirit is already there in the moment that Jesus was born. So he spoke out what he was seeing in the present tense. Let me just throw this in your wrench just real quick to just blow your mind for just a moment. The Bible says before the foundation of the world, Jesus already came, died, and resurrected. <laughs> Try to think about this one. What? God only speaks 
because it already exists. He just gave you a promise because he already sees your family saved in this building. He just gave you a promise because he'd already sees, young man, what you look like free from that disease and that lust. He already sees you walking around free. He sees what kind of a man of God you are. He sees what kind of a young woman you are. He's already watching you. He's watching you right now. He's watching you do it. He's watching the person who you are. Because I just want you to know something. Remember this. As loud as your failures are to you, they do not sway God from how he sees you because he's still within the place of his promise about you. So even though your failures are so loud, they aren't even whispers to God because God is not bound by changing the plan because of your failures. He's bound for how he sees you because of what he calls you through the cross of Jesus. So he continues, listen, he continues to talk to you like the man who you're supposed to be. He doesn't talk to you like the man who you are. He doesn't talk to you like the woman you feel like right now. He talks to you like the woman he sees you are. What do you think he's doing to Gideon? Gideon, mighty man of valor. Gideon says, huh? Who are you talking to? Gideon, mighty man of valor. What? He says, by the way, Gideon, you got too many people. If you fight with this many people, y'all going to think you did it. I need you to get rid of a bunch of them. What, Lord? Get rid of them. He gets rid of a whole section of them. Then what does he say? Ah, still too many. Y'all might still be able to take credit for this. I don't want any man to take credit for what I'm about to do. <laughs> he said, no, no, no. He said, get rid of them. 300 men are left. You know the story. Takes them all out with 300 men. Why? Because oftentimes, I know we don't like this, but oftentimes God waits till it is completely impossible for you. Till he finally begins. Let me tell you, he says, the place where you end is the place God begins. What does he say to Paul? Paul says, my God, I, I can't do this anymore. My grace is sufficient for you. For when you are weak, you are truly the strongest you've ever been. When you feel you're down in the worst place you've ever been, God says, I have now become the strongest you have ever made me. Because finally you're going to get out of my way. Finally you're going to stop trying to do it your own way. Finally you're going to stop leaning on your own understanding. Finally you're going to stop leaning on your own intellect. And finally I might have a chance to do something in your life. We're so busy preaching to our families, God can't even preach to them. We're so busy getting in the way of God for our children by showing a horrible example by pulling them to church. But then we're arguing with our spouses all day long. We're in the midst of craziness. Our house is a war zone. And we're like, but Jesus is great. You got to come to church. Learn about that. What are you talking about? Your children are looking at you. You know what you need? You need power of the Holy Spirit. You need something changing you so that your life can be the message. All right, so let's get going in this. All this is going to happen, but you're sitting here saying like, Lord, I don't know how that's going to happen. That's good. That's a great place to be. Here's the answer, Zechariah 4, 6. It is not by might. It's not going to be by your intellect. It's not going to be by your great ideas. It's not going to be by you digesting 50 sermons on YouTube. It's not going to be about you getting around whatever it's not going to be by power it's going to be by my holy spirit you're not going to be alone please see this with me if you can imagine being on the boat when the storm was going on and all the disciples are freaking out you know they're thinking they're going to die and all of a sudden they see what they think is a ghost that's walking out on the water toward them and they're screaming because now they're not just going to be drowned they're going to be drowned by a ghost so it's pretty bad so they look out there and this ghost, the Bible says it's Jesus and he says to them, do not be afraid, it is I. But that's not what the Greek said. The Greek just says, he simply says, I am. So the ghost shouts, I am. When the I am speaks, Peter looks back and he says, that's the I am? I know who the I am is. 
And if you are the I am, you can tell me to come out and walk on this water. And what does he tell? Come. Peter did not walk on the water that day. If you've preached it that way, if you thought that was going to happen, you're mistaken. Peter walked out on a word. He said, bid me come. And Jesus said, come. When he said, come, all of the atoms, all the electrons, all the molecular structure of water, everything began chatting to each other. And the water had to say to these, the electrons had to turn to the neutrons and say, listen, you're going to have to solidify. And the atoms had to look at those and the quartz down below and say, the atoms to the quartz, listen, you guys are going to have to get together real quick because his foot is coming close to us. And the I am just said a word. So I understand that we're used to drowning people in what we are, but we're going to have to let him walk on us. And see, when you have a word, all you need is a word because you can walk on the stuff you used to drown in if you got a word. Mm -mm -mm. Do you know how powerful it is to have a word? All you need is a word. You'll walk through stuff you never thought you could have gotten through because God gave you a word. You'll get through the worst of the economic times and the gas could go up to $12 a gallon, but you got a word, so you're all right. What? Who cares who's in politics and in the White House? We got a king of kings that's above every economic plan. I got a word. I got a word. Because I have a word, I have confidence, not arrogance, confidence. You know why I have confidence? Because Jesus deserves my confidence. If he says it, I owe him all of my belief. What did Jesus do for you? Everything. The Bible says you can't even survive without him. We're not going to look at all the scripture. Religion. John 15, I'm the vine, you're the branch. If you abide in me, you'll be fine. But apart from me, you can do what? You can't even do anything without him. So they're there on the boat. Peter walks out to him, drowns. We know the whole story. They get back into the boat. He calms the winds and the waves with a word, a word. You know how quietly he said that word? I don't want to get into this too deep, but please, this is so incredible. He doesn't even shout. The Bible actually talks in the tense of that. He doesn't go, peace be still. In the loudest storm, only Jesus had to whisper, peace be still. And the loudest thunderclaps, the loudest lightnings, the winds around when they heard the voice that was the same voice at the beginning of time that tuned them into being. The same voice when God spoke, Jesus was the word that came forth and the Holy Spirit was the one who manifested him. Him, the person of Jesus, who is the word. God spoke it, Jesus was the word that came forth, the Holy Spirit manifested it. And at that moment, every single thing in creation knew the sound of that voice. Do you know that when Jesus stood up on the boat, do you remember when Peter couldn't catch anything? All night, he comes back into the boat and he's like, I can't catch nothing. And Jesus said, hey, cast your nets, plural. Cast your nets, not one net. Cast your nets, because God's not telling you to go for a little dip. When God tells you something, he's going to give you more than you asked for. So wait a second. He said, cast your nets on the other side. Please understand something. The I am just spoke. Every single fish in that lake, in the Indian Ocean, in the Arctic Ocean, in the Pacific Ocean, and the Atlantic Ocean was headed for that net. Only those fish happened to get there first. And it was breaking the boat, sinking them. But I'm telling you, every whale, every, everything was headed for the net when the I am spoke. Nets. You're not just going to get one of your family members saved. All of them are going to get saved. Nets. Nets. You've been asking for one thing. God's like, I'll give you five. You've been saying that breakthrough. Why not ask for all of it? Listen, I can't, God is saying I cannot exceed when you don't ask. I need you to ask so I can have something to exceed. I need you to imagine so I can have something to exceed. I need you to, come on now. 
We're sitting here, Lord, just like, would you help me just pay my rent this month? I understand it's real. But don't say that anymore. Say this. Lord, I'm not only asking God, I know that you know my needs. I'm asking that you give me enough I can pay my next door neighbor's rent. That's more like a godly prayer. I'm asking you give me enough God that I can buy a car for the single mom that I have in my heart right now because uh, she can't even get to church. That's the kind of prayer God will answer. He wants to... He, he, he wants you to know, according to Matthew 6, if you'll seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things, the basics of clothes and the cars you need and the money you need and all that, they are magnets to people who seek the kingdom. It said they'll simply be added unto you. Just added. They're, the necessity, Jesus says, I already know the clothes you need. Look at how I clothe the lilies and the, and, and the birds. <laughs> Look what I do. You say, you literally think I'm going to leave you out to dry? But are you putting your trust in him or are you dependent on everything else the world can offer to try to meet your needs? Because until you employ God as your provider, he will not force himself to be. Peter comes up to him and he says, uh, Lord, because Jesus was talking to him and said, I'm going to go to the cross. I'm going to die and then I'm going to raise again. And Peter's looking at Jesus like, you're crazy, man. Like. You woke up on the wrong side of the bed today. Something's wrong with you. He said, let me take you to the side. So <laughs> Peter pulls him to the side and he says, Lord, you're not going to go to the cross. Ain't no way you're going to do it. The Bible said he begins to rebuke the son of God. Not a good choice. Not a good tactic. So he's talking to Jesus, trying to tell him that Jesus, you missed it today. And Jesus looks back at him and he says, get behind me, Satan. He doesn't say it to Peter. The Bible says right there, it says, for you are speaking. This is Matthew 16, 22 through 23. Peter, you are a dangerous trap to me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view. God condemns the way that you reason in your mind. He condemns it. Human reasoning is condemned by God. You working it out on your own strength, the way you want to work out this situation with your wife, the way you think you're going to promote this whole thing, the way you're going to work out the situation at your job, all that. If you do that without him, he condemns it. Because anything you come up with without God is always less than what you could have had. So he says, listen, I'm rebuking the spirit you're coming from. It's a spirit of human reasoning. It's not God's. Because Peter, it didn't make sense to him. He's like, it don't make sense to me why you go to the cross. You ain't never done anything wrong. So Jesus looks at him and said, Peter, you think because it doesn't make sense to you, it ain't God? Some of y'all need to hear that. You think just because it doesn't make sense to you what's in this word, it, just, it can't be right? Who made you the judge of what's God and what's not? Some of y'all love the Jesus, for instance. Let's talk about Jesus. Some of y'all love the Jesus who comes, you know, and he holds the one who came and said, he whoever does not have the sin, cast the first stone. We love that story. Because he said, neither do I accuse you. The woman gets up, he said, now go and sin no more. We love that story. But do you know the story? Do you know the Jesus who knits a whip? Who takes the whip and drives people out of the church? Do you know that Jesus? Do you want him? The one who will come into where you are and flip over tables because you're bringing the world into his house? That's Jesus too. How about the Jesus who preaches, yes, you know, uh, Beatitudes, beautiful sermon, you love those. But how about the Jesus who looks at the Pharisees and says, you whitewashed snakes? Because he rebukes hypocrisy. You sure you want that Jesus too? Because you got to want all of Jesus. He's ready to help you, but there are areas of our life we have not surrendered to the Holy Ghost, and he does not want you to do this alone. He doesn't want you to feel alone. You're going to have it in this season, and this is God's will for you, but you have to learn how to depend on the Holy Ghost. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Do you understand? It's him. It's it's him. It's him. Romans 8, 14, those who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. That word means mature children of God. It doesn't matter if you've been saved for 40 years. If you've never been led by the Holy Ghost in 40 years, you're still a baby. 
The only way you become mature as a Christian is you're led by the Holy Ghost. Somebody could be a Christian for four years but know how to be led by the Holy Spirit more mature than a person who's in the church for 40 years. Just because you've been sitting like a car in the shop for 40 years does not give you the ability and the anointing and all that. If you were not used within 40 years, today's the day to be led by the Holy Ghost. It's time to turn it over. Turn it over. Enter into true maturity with God. You understand you'll always be at the wrong place at the, right at the wrong time. Anybody ever said this in their life? Why me, Lord? Why? Really? Again? You ever said that? Like, really? Again? Like, this happening to me again? It's because you just happen to seem to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. It's because you're off rhythm. You're off rhythm. Galatians 5.25, look at this. Since we are lived by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. That word means the rhythm of the Spirit. There is a rhythm in the Spirit. You see it when you see men and women that you respect or people and you just say there's just something different about their life and they just seem to have favor over them all the time and all the good stuff seems to happen for them and you know who those people are. You know what's going on? They got in rhythm. They woke up. See, when you're sleeping, there is a song that is going on in the Holy Ghost. There is a spiritual beat that is happening even while you're asleep. And when you wake up, you can simply get out and get on beat. And you know what begins to happen to your life? You begin to say things like Ruth said. Ruth was left. She left with Naomi. And she came to the field. And there were a lot of fields to choose. But it said she happened to come into the field with Boaz. Boaz represents Jesus. Ruth represents the church. She happened to collide with the exact field. Even though there were many to choose. She happened to be at the right place at the right time. You know what happens to you when you get with the rhythm of the Holy Ghost? He takes over your feet. So you go to the right place at the right time. You keep saying these things, man, I happen to be at that restaurant and they happen to be sitting next to me and I went over and shook their hand and that person knew my boss who then gave me a promotion. Who would have known it? I happened to be in church sitting in that section and I thought I was just sitting in that section, but God had you sitting in that section because you're on his rhythm and there happened to be somebody that you met who then knew your family, who then helped your sister get saved, but it happened to just be into the place. You just happened to be at the right place. You happened to go to Walmart because you thought you needed to pick up some milk. But you went to Walmart at 5.05, not 5.10, because you're on the Holy Ghost schedule, not you. You didn't know it, but your feet were already playing. So you went to Walmart because you ran out of milk at the exact time God wanted you to run out of milk so that you could get over to Walmart at 5.05. Because at 5.05, he already saw somebody that you needed to encourage. There was a single mom there. You needed to buy groceries for her. So he got you over there at 5.05 so she could be overwhelmed by the love of God because you happened to be on the Holy Ghost schedule it's exciting y'all a life in the Holy Ghost is not boring if you were bored as a Christian you're not in the rhythm if you are still contemplating whether you want to stay in bed in the morning you're not in the rhythm because you'll be so excited to jump out. Woo! What's God about to do today? What's God about to do? Oh my God. Who am I going to meet? Who am I going to lay hands on? Who's going to God, who's God going to give me a word? <laughs> exciting life. The most exciting life in the world is the life of a Christian. Do you want to get on rhythm? Because let me tell you, even though he spoke the word, it's going to take your faith and it's going to take your surrender for it to happen. John 6, 21, Jesus is on the end of a lake and it says that he wants to cross over to the other side. And it says that before he can cross over to the other side, he gets in the boat. I've been there to Jerusalem around Israel and that lake is two and a half hour boat ride from one side to the other. But it says immediately when Jesus touched the boat, he immediately was on the other side. He was transported. God did not have time for the two and a half hours it would take him to cross that lake. The father needed him there now. So the father got him there now. Philip dip in the Ethiopian eunuch in the river, the book of Acts. After he baptizes him, he vanishes and he's transported 55 miles away to the city of Azotos to preach. 
God did not have time for him to walk the 55 miles. God needed him there to preach now. Some of y'all, God does not have time for you to figure all this out for the next 10 years. God wants to get you there now. God wants to get you there now. Some of y'all, the things that will take you five and 10 years, God will get you there in six months. God will put you over people that are more qualified than you are. God will put you over people who have more degrees than you do. God will put you into areas and shaking hands with people of influence you never ever thought in your wildest dreams you would. Why? Because you submitted your schedule to him. He wants you to be in places. Next year, some of y'all aren't even going to be in this country because you're supposed to be ministering in other countries. Next year, some of y'all are going to be on the mission field. Next year, some of y'all are going to be in a place where you thought that you were a failure as a mother, but you're going to be homeschooling your kids with wisdom you never even knew was possible because God's going to give you insight. Some of y'all are teachers in the school system, and you think next year is just going to be another year, but the Lord doesn't have that plan for you. The Lord has a way better plan for you as a teacher than you ever could have planned for yourself. Do you want to find out what that is? Some of y'all are making half a million right now in your business. God has some numbers for you he wants you to reach by next year. But he has the insight to give it to you. And I guarantee you, you try to figure this all out by yourself. You might have another year like this year. And if you're happy with that, then God bless you. But if you truly want the full potential, you're never satisfied. Because you know God has more for you. I'm asking people in this building today to lean on the Holy Ghost. I'm asking you to realize the great counselor and advocate that you have with you. He's the same one that beat inside of the chest of Jesus. Do you understand? Jesus didn't give you a different spirit. He gave you the tested and tried spirit, the Holy Ghost himself. The same spirit that reached out through his hand and healed people. He gave you that spirit. The same spirit that gave him wisdom in the time when Jesus wouldn't have known what to say, but it bubbled up and he knew exactly what to say. He gave you that spirit. The same spirit who made Jesus bold every time he needed to be bold, he gave you that spirit. You don't have a separate Holy Ghost. You have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. He's here right now. Can you feel him? He's wanting to touch people right now. He's wanting you to receive him. If you feel the presence of the Lord, just lift your hands. Why do we lift our hands? Because we're partnering with what he's trying to do. He's moving on you right now. You don't need to stop it. Just partner with it. We lift our hands because we surrender. If a guy has a gun to your back, you surrender. But this isn't a bad man. This is the most loving person. <laughs> If you can surrender to men that are evil, don't you think you could surrender to the most loving God who's ever been there? Lift your hands up. Come on, just lift them up. Turn his piano up, man. Play that. Turn your eyes. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Come on, let him touch you. Let him touch you. Mm. Come on, play that again. Play that again. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Turn him up in the house. <laughs> oh, Jesus.
will grow strangely thin in the light of his glory. Come on, sing it again. Turn your eyes. Come on. So we're singing. And turn your eyes upon Jesus. Jesus. Look in his wonderful faith. He's beautiful. He's still beautiful. And the things of earth will grow strange in the light. Some of y'all need this. Don't rush this moment. Some of y'all need this. Come on, lift your hands up. Let's sing it one more time. Oh, turn your eye. Come on. He's beautiful. He's beautiful. Turn your This is the last time. Come on, with all your might. Come on, he's beautiful. He's worthy. Come on, just one more. I'm loving him right now. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. What a wonderful face. What a wonderful face, God. Oh, Jesus. And the things of will grow straight. In the light is glory. Keep playing that. If you have a prayer language and you pray on the Holy Spirit and you're grateful for it, just lift your hands. Put your hands down. If you do not have a prayer language, you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of a prayer language, just lift your hands up. Both hands. Do not be ashamed. God wants to give you a prayer language right now. Just in your seats, right there as you're standing. Close your eyes. I was halfway through the stage and the Holy Spirit told me right there, I want to pour my spirit on those people. Nobody making a sound. We're just continuing to watch. Just in your heart. Just in your heart singing to the Lord. Your eyes upon you. The Bible says that I'll reach out. The ministers would reach out their hands. If you're one in the Holy Ghost. And he said that they would proclaim the statement. Receive the Holy Ghost. I speak to you on the right. Receive the Holy Ghost. I speak to you in the middle. Receive the Holy Ghost. I speak to you on this side. Receive the Holy Ghost. I speak to you on the left. Receive the Holy Ghost. Now I want you to breathe in. Breathe in. Now, I'm going to count to three. It's not about the number. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you, those of you who already have a pranger language on the count of three, I want you to begin praying in, in tongues. Those of you who do not have a prayer language, let me tell you what's about to happen. The only way you will stop yourself from getting this beautiful gift is if you keep your mouth shut. Your faith is... God wants to pour out of your belly rivers of living water, but your mouth is the faucet. You have to unscrew the faucet so God can let the water come out. 
All that means is you need to open your mouth. It might come out as sounds at first. You don't even know what they mean. It's not from your head. It's out of your belly. But what's about to flow out of you are perfect prayers for your family, perfect prayers for your life. Let me tell you this, one of the greatest revelations God ever gave me. When you pray in the Holy Spirit, you're allowing God himself to pray through you using your lips to mouth the words. If God prays to God, God always will get what he asks for. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you're allowing the Holy Spirit to lay hands on you. <laughs> Jude says, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, pray in the Holy Spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost. What he's saying is the building means the edifying and the empowering. How are you getting edified and empowered? The Holy Spirit is praying for you. Here we go. One, everybody who has tongues who already does it, I want you to begin praying. Those of you who do not, do not miss out on this. You need to begin to make sound. Open up your mouth. It's in your belly, and you need to just let it out. One, two, by faith, three. Come on, move your mouth. Do not be quiet. Come on. My God, my God, my God, my God. You're getting it. You're getting it. Yes, you got it, sir. You're getting it, my God. Come on. Yes, you're getting it right now. Yes, yes, yes. Don't be afraid. Open up that mouth. Yeah, increase the volume now. Increase the volume. Let yourself, let it come out. Let it come out. Don't hold on the inside. Jesus is with you. Nobody else matters. Yes, he's coming out. He's flowing through. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, that's beautiful, ma'am. I can hear you from here. There it is. Yes, young man. Yes, young man. You're getting it right there. Don't let anything shut this down. You're being empowered. You're being strengthened. You're being empowered. You're being strengthened. Oh, he's coming to heal parts of your heart you don't even know about that are hurt. He's coming to heal parts that you don't even know are wounded. He's the Holy Ghost. Okay, everybody quiet one more time. We're going to take one more dip. But oh my God, that was amazing. That was, I mean, if you could just see from my angle what just happened. So many of you just got the Holy Ghost. Oh my gosh. And you got him in such an empowering way. But we're going to take one more dip because God cares about everyone. Here's what we're going to do. This next time I'm going to count to three and I want everybody to worship God in English. So when we count to three, just say praise phrases is what I call them. Praise you, God. I love you, Lord. You're amazing. You're incredible. Everybody be doing that. I'm going to count to three one more time. And when I do that, you'll stop praising God in English and you'll allow that same spirit of praise to come out of you. But you'll be moving your mouth in a different way. Okay, here we go. Praise God in English. One, two, three. Every single one of us. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We love you. We glorify your name. You're amazing. You're incredible. God, nobody can do what you do. Nobody is like you. Who is like you, Lord? Who is as amazing as you are, God? Who is as beautiful as you are, God? Lord, you've changed my life. Lord, you made me want more. Lord, you've given me everything. God, I worship you. I worship you. Hallelujah. 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 One. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Three. Let that spirit of praise. There you go. 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 It's coming out like a river. It's coming out like a river. It's coming out with power. It's coming out with power. Wow. Oh God, oh God, oh God, don't let it stop. Lord, we want more. Lord, we want more. Lord, we want more. Lord, we want more. Oh, I see deliverance. I smell deliverance. I smell deliverance. It's starting on the right side of this building. I want you to be set free right now. When the Holy Ghost comes in, he lets everything, he pushes it all out. When the Holy Ghost comes in, he pushes everything else out. Be set free in the name of Jesus. 
be set free in the name of Jesus. Deliverance, be set free in the name of Jesus. I literally felt deliverance just coming in on this right side right here. That means that for a small moment right now, God is going to begin to address certain spirits, not ones that you're possessed by, but certain spirits that have been influencing and attaching themselves to you. It is time to be detached. It is time to be set free. What you have to do right now is in this room right here, very solemn presence. Hold on. Very solemn presence. Repent right now. Any sins that you know of right now, just begin to repent. This is a very solemn presence in this place. Repent right now. That It literally just shifted. It was like a color and it just shifted. The wave has shifted. I want you to repent right now. Any known sins that are going on, we got to clean this room out. Clean this room. Any connections you have had to the occult in your past. Anytime you've ever seen a Ouija board or if you watch continuous horror movies, whatever it might be, I need you to repent right now and I need you to renounce your connections. Renounce your connections. This is out loud. You say, I renounce my connection. Some of y'all, it was abusive relationships, severe abusive relationships. You are no longer connected to that person. They are no longer to you. You have been set free and severed of their connection in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of y'all sexual encounters, sever yourself from the connection in Jesus' name. Right now, sever yourself. I, I, I renounce that connection. I am no longer bound. I am no longer with that. I am no longer connected to it. Go ahead. <sighs> renounce it. Renounce it. Dedicate right now in your heart. If you have things in your house right now that you know are grieving to the Lord, you will get rid of them by the time you get home. Dedicate right now. God is coming for a greater level of glory and he needs a higher level of purity. You got to be serious about your relationship with God in this time. This isn't just another thing you do. What have your eyes been seeing? What have your ears been listening to? What have you been saying out of that mouth? Those are the gates into your heart. You have to protect those gates. You have to stay within the bloodline because if you step out of the bloodline, don't be surprised when you play in the enemy's camp if one of them comes home with you. Stay in the bloodline. The protection is in the bloodline. Right now, if that is you and you say, I have literally, I've been either with a sexual encounter, I've had either an abusive relationship that I was attached to, or you say specifically, I have things that I've gotten into when it comes to the occult, whether I was playing with my friends, whether I got into it, whether it be a palm reading, a tarot card, Ouija board, whatever it might have been, and I repent of it right now in the name of Jesus. Any of those, lift your hands in the air because it's time to be delivered. Be set free right now in Jesus' name. Be set free. Shh, 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 shh. Nobody make noise. Be set free now. Just allow him to do it. Shh. Be set free. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. You're being delivered right there. Just let it go, man. You're going to be, it's, it's all gone. I say you are no longer bound to that relationship. That abusive experience, you are being set free. You are no longer bound to that abusive person. Let God clear him out. It's gone. It's over. That's it. There it is. There it is. Just let it go. Wow, there he is. There's the presence of the Lord. There's the presence of God. There's the power of God. 
You've become a manipulator. I didn't know this was going to happen again today. Yesterday this happened, but it's again today. There are people in this room. You have been operating under the spirit of control and manipulation by controlling people with your attitudes and your emotions. They walk on eggshells around you. That is a spirit of control. You are controlling people with the attitudes and emotions. Just repent right now. Let it go and be set free in the name of Jesus. Be set free. Be set free. God is good enough for you. Bitterness. You must forgive. There's a spirit of bitterness. Please let them go. Just let them go. Let them go. Some of y'all are being held back, but just forgive. I promise. Just let it go right now. I know that we don't understand. I understand that it's been hard. I know that I don't understand, but God understands. He sees. But unforgiveness is the only unforgivable sin. Please just forgive right now. The Lord is coming to help you. Once you release forgiveness, many of you will begin to feel a release. Just release it. Release it to the Lord. He saw it. He knows about it. Just release it to the Lord. Thank you, Lord God. There you go. He's touching you right there. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Some of you grew up in abusive homes and they're still attached to you, the spirit of divorce. I understand that I would have to have time to explain this through the word, but I promise it's a real thing. There is a spirit that follows some of us that makes us, it's the spirit of trying something out and breaking up, trying something out and breaking up, but there's no commitment. That is on some of you. You have that spirit, you're just trying it out and then you know that you're going to break it up. You know that you're not going to be a part of it for too long. But you're a person that goes in and out of things. You are not a committer. That is the same spirit as the demonic spirit that comes that makes demons go to and fro. Bible says in Job that the devil came before the Lord and says, where have you been? And he said, I've been going to and fro about the earth. Demons have no peace. They can't be committed. They can't plant anywhere. They can't be flourished. Lift your hands up. Repent right now. If you've been one of those people, you're just here, then you're there, then just let it go right now. Repent right now before God. He wants to solidify himself in you. Psalm 92, those who are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of their God. Planted, planted. Thank you, Jesus. God is hearing requests right now. God is doing mighty, mighty, mighty things, mighty things. There's people right here in this entire section. You've been having digestive issues and pains. Just put your hand up right there. Just right there, right there, right there. Yeah, just right here. There's multiples of you. Put your hand on your stomach. Breathe in and out, please. Put your hand on your stomach. Breathe in. Now breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Be completely healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There's multiple. There's a couple men and women right here in the center. Back pains and back issues. Lift your hands up right here. Back pain and back issues. I want you to turn like this to the side. Do this in faith with me, please. And then I want you to begin bending down and coming up. By the power of the Holy Ghost, he's healing you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. How's that starting to feel, ma'am? Look at your smile. Come on. Be healed. Wow. Come on. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my Lord. Look at people's smiles. Look at what God's doing for them. There is a severe breathing issue that's in the back section over there. Somewhere in the back section, like almost to the back. There's a breathing. I don't know if it's a young child. I don't know if it's a, it, but, but I don't know if it's a mid. And I, it, There's definitely a couple adults too, but breathing issues. Would you lift your hands up? You're right in that area right now. Thank you so much. Breathing issues. Thank you. Would you? Thank you. In the name of Jesus, breathe in and out. <sighs> That's the power of the Holy Ghost. You might feel a warm sensation in your chest right now and a release, a warm sensation. I had uh, severe bronchitis ever since I was 12 years old. I remember the feeling, severe tightness and then a release in Jesus' name. As a matter of fact, this entire building, if you have breathing issues, put your hands up right now. There you go. Breathing issues, everyone. Now, begin to breathe in. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Blow out. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Blow out. Allow the presence of the Lord to heal you right now. Breathing issues. Be healed. Thank you, Lord. You're going to feel freedom in your lungs right now. Some of y'all literally begin to feel freedom in your lungs. 
Freedom of air. Wow. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. My God, my God, my God. Thank you, Jesus. You're so worthy. We're going to sing this one more time. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Everybody one last time. Hands lifted. Let's just see how beautiful he is. What he's doing today. What he's doing today. Shh. In God's presence. Just look at him face to face. Hey, your eyes upon Jesus. Look for in his wonderful face. In the beautiful presence in the room I want to ask you one last question are you sure that you know Jesus are you sure beyond the shadow of a doubt that you know Jesus that he is your Lord and Savior that if something happened to you today God forbid that and you woke up that you would wake up looking in the face of Jesus in eternity and nowhere else do you know this Jesus I've been talking about you want him in your life please believe me you don't want to go one more moment without him you don't want to go one more day without him you don't want to do it if you say, Gavin, you know what? I'm not sure. I've never received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Or you say, number two, I was on fire for God at one time, but man, I've let that fire go dim, and I'm, uh, man, I'm ready to turn back. And you happen to be in this building today. Jesus has you here for a reason. This is why I preached. It's for this moment for you right here. We care about you. Would you lift your hand right now? And say, I want Jesus. One, two, three. Lift him up. Look, 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 look. I want Jesus. I want Jesus. Come on, wave it. Would you come down? Come down. Come down. Come down. Come on. Don't wait. Come down, come down. We're not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to ask you to say anything. Come down to the front. Come on, give him my hand. If you just lifted your hands, I want Jesus. Come down. I'm not going to embarrass you, I promise. Come down, come on. Come, come, come. Give him my hand. These are our family coming. These are our family coming. Oh, Jesus. We got couples coming together. We got couples coming together. We got young people coming. Welcome, come into the family. Come into the family. Come into the family. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. We got plenty of altar workers here. Just spread them right on out. Over this side, too, we got some people. Holy Lamb. They're still coming. They're still coming. Look at him coming down right here with this boy right here. Look at this young man. Your life will never be the same, young man. Your life is changing forever. You're changing masters. Your destiny is shifting. The enemy's plan is broken. Look at this whole family coming up. We got a whole family with two children. Everybody's getting saved in the house today. The whole family's coming. This is what's going to happen in this house. Your whole family is going to walk down this aisle. Your whole family is going to be coming. It's your time. It's your time. Holy cow. All right, listen. Sheesh. This is so amazing right now. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Please look at me real quick. I just got to say a couple quick things. Number one, the decision you're making today is the greatest decision you'll ever make. This one you'll never regret, I promise. Because right now, every sin that you've committed that you can do nothing about, that you feel guilty about and ashamed, Jesus already knows them. But in a moment, you're about to give them over to him. And he's never going to give them back to you. He's going to put them as far as the east is from the west. He's not going to remind you of your past. You'll be the only one who does that. If you want to. But I would suggest from this moment, leave it all here. And move on with your future. You're going to give these sins to the Lord. He's going to wash you clean. But then what's going to happen is you're going to have to forgive yourself. That might be harder for you. I understand. Nobody feels worthy of forgiveness. But Jesus didn't just come and die on the cross for the beautiful parts of yourself. He didn't come and die on the cross for all the prayers you were going to give him and the life you were going to devote to him. He died on the cross because he wanted your ugliness. Listen to me. 
he bought your ugliness too. He bought all the filthy parts about you. He's not ashamed of them. He wants them. He's asking for you to give him the filthy, embarrassing parts of yourself because he's showing you right now, I paid for those too. That's what this is about. There's nothing too bad that he can't handle. He's a big God. So right now, we're all going to say a prayer together. But after this moment we say this prayer, it's very important that you understand something. This is only the first step. The Bible says very clearly that just saying a prayer is only part of the journey. It's not all of it. From now on, you have to turn over the bosshood of your life. You might have been the boss of your schedule, the boss of your plans, but God wants to become the boss now. That means some of the friends you have, you're going to have to let go of. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love them. It just means that they're not taking you anywhere toward God. Some of the people in your life, you're going to have to reassess. Some of the things you're doing, you're going to have to ask God about your job now. You're going to have to ask him about where you work. You're going to have to say, God, are these things in your, my life pleasing to you? Because it's all about him now. Are you dedicating to do that? You're not just dedicating to say a prayer, but you're dedicating to become a disciple of Jesus. That means you have to get into a group here. You got to come to a church. That means you got to get serious about your relationship with God. That might interfere with some of your plans, but just know that's about to happen right now. So you're not doing this falsely. Okay. Let's all pray together, every one of us out loud, especially you who are up here in the front so that someone next to you can hear. Dear Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. I know that you died, that you were buried, and that you raised from the dead. I receive your forgiveness. I receive the blood that cleanses me. I am no longer guilty. I am no longer guilty. I am no longer guilty. But now I am innocent because of the blood. Now, Lord, help me to forgive myself. Take a moment right now and just forgive yourself. You got to let this go to God. Allow this to happen. I know this is hard. Come on. Allow his power. I know you're not worthy, but he loves you. You have to do this if you want to move on with your future. It's okay. It's okay, ma'am. It's all right. That's the Lord. That's the God's love. It's okay, sir. That's God's love. The Lord, see, the moment you do this, you ask God for help. You see how he's already going to help you? He's already helping you, and you just said your first words to him. <laughs> he's already helping you, and you just said your first words to him. That's how close he was. He was already at the door knocking, and now you just let him in. Let him help you forgive yourself. It's all right. Let's finish the prayer. And now, Lord... Now that I've forgiven myself, I believe that you are now the boss. I turn my decisions over to you. I turn my schedule over to you. I turn my plans over to you. Tell me what you want me to do. I will obey. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you all turn around? Turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. Will we welcome the into the family of Christ. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Our new family members into the family of Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Come on, I want to receive that message this morning. I'm going to receive that prophetic word that morning. You said that was for me. We're going to continue this series in the Holy Ghost this Wednesday. Pastor Robert's going to be here. Let's come to everything. God has a word for us each of these days, and we don't want to miss not one of them. Be here Wednesday at 7 p.m. We want to see you. Bring a friend. Invite somebody. We're so glad you came today. If you need prayer, come up front to the altar. We have a whole team that's ready to pray with you. We love you so much, church. Have a wonderful Sunday. Um, don't forget to grab your kids from Kids World. Remember this, if God is for you, there is no one who can come against you. Have a wonderful Sunday. God bless you.